the studio. Are you one of those people who have complained that there hasn't been a YouTube video from Sarah Mars Art Studio for about 10 months? <gasps> 10 months? Stuff just gets in the way. Now I know that probably didn't sound very sincere, but this year in 2018 I have made a New Year's resolution to crack on with social media and make sure I have a blog post every month, mid-month, and at the end of each month do a YouTube video. So, because it has been so long since my last YouTube video, I thought I'd start this one of 2018 off with a bang and show you my biggest, strangest project of 2017 uh, and of my career so far. I got asked to uh, paint a bright orange van, paint a beautiful mural all the way around it. We're going to paint the mural on the van using these uh, colours, which I got from Brewers this morning, and they're all combi colour, Rustoleum paints. Uh, because it was so expensive, um, I decided I would challenge myself like I do with the kids at school, so they'll be very pleased about this, and just use the prime colours plus black and white to get your tint shades and tones. As you just heard, my past self is painting the van my biggest canvas ever, purely with primary colours. Just so you're aware, I am going to be popping up throughout the video like a narrator because it was hard to explain things on the actual project. Things like wind and the cars disrupted the video a little bit. Um, I do, do explain some things, but you can see what I mean later. And later you'll see me starting to get embarrassed talking to a camera with neighbours walking up past the drive, which is where I was painting the van out here. So I hope you understand. Now here comes my first attempt of using air spray. <laughs> Hey guys, um, I got up really early this morning um, to go start painting the van uh, today and using the air spray works so well to get a really nice blend um, between all the colours of the sky and there's so many colours in the sky and I found that it's easier going from the dark colours first at the top and then get lighter, lighter, lighter um, and it seems to be going really well, so in a moment when I'm having my lunch I'll take you out there and I'll show you what, what's been going on you're out on my drive at the moment, so I can show you the van. This is as far as we've got with it. I don't want to do too much talking out here, because there's loads of neighbours about. I don't want them to see me talking to you. It'd be a bit weird, because you're just a camera at the moment. Right, neighbours walking by have, have gone now, so I'll just show you. So I started off with um, mixing up a purple out of primary colours. Remember, this is a all primary colour only project. So mixed up a really dark sort of purple and then on top of that I put on a, a dark blue and now I've put on a sort of mid-tone blue and I don't know if you can tell. I'll just show you guys. So goes from dark blue and it does gradually get lighter into a really light blue. What I'm going to show you now is how, how I've actually achieved this effect. Okay, these are the colours that are so far on the van. This is a purple, but I think it probably looks brown on the on the camera. And then we've gone into a dark blue, and and then a mid-tone blue, which I've just finished with. And I've got two more blues to go, and they've all been mixed out of just these colours. Not yellow, but all the others there. This paint is really sticky and takes forever to get off. I spent ages last night trying to get it off my face. So I'm wearing gloves this time. <laughs> right, so I'm changing the blue and because we're using blues and they're just getting lighter each time, I'm not, I'm not worrying too much about cleaning this out. I'm just adding in the next bit of paint. And this paint has already been thinned out with the thinner so I can actually get through the, through the air spray, which is this thing.
This is a good a day as any To start the rebuilding of life The roads that lay open are many When the old one's gone under the knife And I can feel the sun on my skin It's just started raining outside again and also I think, well there is a, hu a hurricane coming over from Ireland um, but I don't think I'm going to say reach today but I'm probably quite limited on what I get done today I may just have to go work under the tarpaulin Yeah, rain could be quite a problem if the paint hadn't dried uh, it would go all speckly. So after that learning curve, I only ever painted under the tarpaulin if it rain if it was raining, or I would just look at the weather forecast and try and plan um, when I was going to paint, so that it would have the paint would have two hours to dry, which is what I needed really um, before it rained. Uh, Still, my feeling made it a bit more tricky though. because things kept getting stuck to the paint, things like flies and leaves and I was having to pick them out with tweezers. Um, so in the future I will be using a warehouse. Next up I started painting snow onto the mountains and it's very important for Helen, the owner of the van, who you can also follow on Instagram, you can follow all her adventures with the van and, and things like that. Um, it was very important for her uh, to have the seasons going around the van and winter was going to be on the bonnet and then go spring, summer with autumn on the back. So quick tip for you, snow isn't white. Um, you'll see that I actually use blue, particularly in the shadows, on uh, the mountains. And there's even some pink and grey in there. <laughs> Not tomorrow, there's no time to borrow today. Well, something's got to give today. It's a good day today and not tomorrow, there's no time This morning we've been, I've been working on these mountains here and as we get um, down towards this, this glow of the sun um, the mountains are going to get slightly, have a pink tinge to them to show that Another tip for you, when you want depth to your picture uh, and show things further away, paint them in fainter and lighter colours. 
I chose a light blue for the mountains in the background and as the uh, mountains reached the foreground they became darker with bolder colours. Now onto my favourite part, painting the water. trees again they were far away and so the ones further away were painted in a really lovely blue color and as they came forward the trees got greener and again bolder as well Reflections are great to paint. I still think they're easier to paint with oils because they're easier to blend. Um, Rust-Oleum paint, a bit like painting with Tipex really. Uh, but again, if you thin it down, like you can with oils, uh, it's much easier. Once I've thinned it down, I roughly copied in the colours and shapes of the mountain. Normally I turn the painting that I'm working on upside down, but obviously that's far too difficult with a van. <laughs> Uh, the important thing to look at for next are the brush strokes that I choose. The froth of the water shown with off-white paint on the waves caused by the waterfall crashing down. And the thin, nearly white line that breaks up the water surface from the mountains, suggesting a sort of ripple. That last bit really um, is the magical finishing touch with water, I think. So the way you apply paint can work brilliantly uh, to show the illusion of water. If you want to see more of that, uh, just click on my Kipling's Jungle painting and there's a little bit in there. Um, but I'd also be happy to do another video on water. Maybe I'll do that next month. Uh, let me know if that's something you're interested in. This is a new day painting the van, but back at Kipling's Jungle because this time I'm getting inspiration from how I did the mist where the water hits the uh, where the waterfall hits the pool 
Um, now I think on the van the rest of the water has gone really super um, but I'm trying to figure out how best to do the mist. I'm thinking um, because the Rostonian paint is so thick, like I said earlier it's like painting the tipex, it might be best to thin it down and use the air spray like I did for the sky but then build it up using um, a sponge, just sponging on the rest of the paint um, just to give it some, some body I suppose. in the mountains and adding bolder greener colours as it comes forward towards the viewer. This particular side was a perfect side to show the seasons. Um, we chose a cherry tree to go by the driver's seat, uh, all in blossom to suggest spring of course, and then as we go further down it turns into summer with a more leafy tree. I also chose really carefully uh, an array of alpine plants that would be out at the time, um, just doing a bit of research on the internet. <laughs> Water is my favourite thing to paint, but I also really loved painting the back of the van. Uh, the only downside was that I was almost sat on the path where pedestrians were walking past, and therefore I couldn't film an awful lot. The back of the van had an autumn theme, and I decided to uh, set it in the twilight part of the day. Uh, the reason being was because Helen wanted campers on the back of it, um, and with a campfire going and their tents. And I thought, well, a campfire is obviously going to look best in the dark. <laughs> so, hence, I chose a twilight sort of time of day. I also chose to then make the grass um, blue, use different shades of blue, uh, because, of course, as it gets darker, you lose the real colours that are around you. And if you look at your colour wheels, <laughs> you'll see that blue and orange are yeah, complementary colours. And therefore, the fire was going to pop out beautifully on the bluish background, which is another reason why I chose to do the tents orange, as well as the fact that the van used to be orange, and it's a nod to that. In fact, there was a bit of an outcry <coughs> when people found out that 
What is that noise? There was a bit of an outcry at first uh, when our friends found out that the van was no longer going to be orange. Um, but I think everyone is, is happy with it now. all the outdoor sports that she loves so that was going to be challenging because I'd be here painting small figures in action poses. First up was the rock climber who I practiced drawing in the studio and I decided to put her over the waterfall because I thought she would just pop out beautifully against such a pale background. Um, it was end of November, beginning of December time. It got so cold I had to dig out my ski jacket and put on a pair of gloves underneath my plastic gloves. And because of this, the figures all took on a slightly wobbly quality <laughs> because of my shivering. But you know what? So many people love that. It gave the impression of movement and liveliness to each of the figures. Coming up next are the hikers, which are based on a couple of my friends. I don't think they even know. <laughs> and a dog, which they don't have, but I thought the dog would be happy in the environment that I've painted.
worked it out. Nick and Kim, it's you who are the couple on the van, and you also have a dog. It, I know it's painted, but there we are. Next up is a cyclist, a paraglider, campers in the tents, campers around the campfire, uh, hackers, and one paddleboarder. <laughs> to artists before who like doing um, outdoor work for sculptors that are going to go outside and things like that. Um, they've recommended using Posca pens uh, which I'm going to go and try now for all the finer details on the van. Hopefully it'll work great. <laughs> <laughs> I was just about to say, I thought it was, um, you know, how they do the decal. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it's not. It's just me, yeah. It's just me, yeah. This morning it seems to have warmed up and melted now so I'm gonna uh, take this opportunity to just get as much done as I can. I'm so close to finishing.
before adding the final figures, the snowboarder and the skiers, the snow came. Finally, after clearing the snow off the van, it was time to paint the skiers and the snowboarder. And the snowboarder, I wanted to be uh, based on the owner of the van, Helen. And so she sent me uh, some pictures of her gear and I stuck them to the window. So that is Helen's snowboard there, which features, of course. And then I've also got pictures of Helen's gear and I just stuck everything to the windows whilst I painted it as a reference. watching the process, I know the neighbours did. 
If you'd like to follow the adventures of Helen and her van, just go to her Instagram page. If you have an exciting project in mind and want me to get involved, you can message me via my website. And don't forget, if you enjoyed this video, then please like and subscribe, share it with your friends, if they're also into murals and mountains or camper vans or just cool up in general. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook and I also have a website that you can find more information on. Alright, thank you so much. See you in February. This is as good a day as any To start the rebuilding of life The roads that lay open are many When the old one's gone under the knife